Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a magnetic excursion update Friday, December 5th, around 10 p.m. Mountain Time, 2025. This is the planet Mercury, and this is its tail. Buckle up, Buttercup. We've got a lot to talk about. We also have a CME that may pass near Earth. Geomagnetic storm watches are up for the 7th and the 8th, and we've got a lot of snow and rain to talk about for the Pacific Northwest. Buckle up, Buttercup, and keep calm. It's boom time. Did you know the current snow cover is the most in 20 years? We've got 43.9% of U.S. snow cover. It's the highest it's been in decades this early in the season. The current coverage at 439 the only higher year on record since 2003 was 45.7 on December 4th of 2005, which matches up nicely with the solar cycle. Adding more evidence that it's not you, it's not CO2, it's the sun. And did you know Denver's biggest snowstorm peaked 112 years ago today? Over 20 inches of snow fell on December 4th. In all, 45.7 inches of snow fell between December 1st and the 5th, mostly on the 4th and 5th. The biggest snowstorm by far on record in Denver, and it took over a month to clean it up. Here are some of the fantastic old-timey photos. All the links will be below. Record-breaking weather possible in Metro Detroit as dangerous cold invades. Some snow chances this weekend and into next week as well. And how long will this bitterly cold stretch last across Michigan and the Northern Plains? Well, unfortunately, well into mid-December. A December to remember. Very cold in the Great Lakes region and the Northeast. And we've got coastal flooding advisories issued for Saturday morning in the Pacific Northwest. Forecasters with the Seattle Office of the National Weather Service issued a coastal flood advisory for Saturday, December 6th for the hours between 4 a.m. and 10 a.m. And that will be your morning commute. Minor, minor coastal flooding expected inundation around two feet. San Juan County, lowlands of western Whatcom County and lowlands of western Skagit and northwestern Snohomish counties as well. So heed the warnings and you guys are going to be flooded out. And well, the snow is looking epic. There are no severe weather warnings or watches at Tornado HQ. We've got some snow here around Michigan. We've got a small front moving through the southeast. Another front behind it producing some snow squalls and snow in the west. And here is the full forecast. As we are tracking weekend storm impacts, a storm and trailing cold front will continue to slowly move through the Gulf Coast and the southeast U.S. through the weekend with widespread rain showers and isolated thunderstorms. A fast-moving clipper storm may bring several inches of snow to the north central plains, Midwest, and eastern Great Lakes and the northeast this weekend. Winter storm watches and warnings are up in purple and pink. So click on your county for more information over at weather.gov. Here is the current state of the GFS model. You can see that heavy precipitation moving in the Pacific Northwest now. That front that is down in the southeast and some lingering lake effect snow. Three hours from now, which is right now actually, that snow will move inland, which we just saw on Tornado HQ. And this storm, this front is going to linger down here in the southeast through the weekend, Saturday, Sunday. It won't really dissipate until Monday where it will pop off some pretty severe storms there as it moves away. But keep your eye on the Pacific Northwest. We've got one, two, three, four. It just doesn't end. All December, the Pacific Northwest is getting La Nina in a big way. And if this holds true, the snowfall in the likes of British Columbia and Washington State are going to be record-breaking. 70 inches here, 89, 140 inches in B.C. through December 21st. It's 12 feet of snow, yo. Just as we're entering winter. Holy macaroni. Even the Sierras are going to be picking up a little bit on the Sierra cement here. Look at that. Uh, and after this, the third week of December, it looks like the whole 
lower 48 is going to explode with more increased precipitation and snow. We're going to be seeing record-breaking snow this year. It's going to be mind-boggling to all the people that bought into global warming. And that's not going to help because they're going to blame it on global warming. Mark my words. An earthquake alarm this morning sparked panic from Nevada to California with a warning of a 5.9 magnitude shock. Many people are fear-mongering that they erased it because of some nefarious reason, but it was a glitch, folks. It's even listed here at the USGS site. On de December 4th, 2025 at 8.06 a.m. Pacific time, the Shake Alert Earthquake Early Warning System was activated for a 5.9 earthquake near Reno and Carson City, Nevada. The event, however, did not occur and has been deleted from the USGS website and data feeds. USGS and the partners are currently looking into what, why the warning system issued a broad region of California, including the Bay Area, this alert. Clearly an error. That's it. Overall, low-level activity worldwide, which is good news for us. We do have a 5.5 in Maria, Morelos, Mexico, and the Camp Chacta is rocking with a 5.1. But those are the biggest quakes, which are nothing. This is something a Geminid meteor captured by Lars Lieber Photography over 11 Mile Reservoir in Colorado. If 11 Mile Reservoir sounds familiar to you, about eight years ago, a herd of elk fell through the ice here, walked out onto the shore, and froze in place as wind chills hit minus 50 degrees. A whole herd frozen to death in an instant. It's cold up there. And a quick look at space weather. All those people fear-mongering about the Carrington-sized sunspots facing Earth couldn't be further from the truth. Even if you took all of these sunspots and put them in one group, it would still pale in comparison to the Carrington spot. People are just not that smart, and they're looking for clicks, so you guys are in the right place because we're giving you the brass tacks. These are not Carrington-sized spots. They never were, uh, and they never will be. Uh, in fact, there is absolutely no flaring uh, above the sea range for the last 48 hours. KP index at three, and we're waiting for a potential CME that shot off the sun yesterday to arrive on the 7th and the 8th. Nothing spectacular, nothing happening on telemetry. Good news there. We could hit G1 geomagnetic storm, but nothing significant. And a new Hubble Space Telescope image of 3I Atlas has emerged, and it's fantastic. This is not from 3I Atlas. Oh, this is. A, this is. But what you can see is the sun pointing tail, which is called the anti-tail. You can see another plasma tail here, and you can see a rotating Birkeland current coming off the back of this baby that is potentially tens of thousands of miles long. And the glowing plasma of the electric comet, not a spaceship. Now look at this faux pas. This is a breaking news story, and according to the journals of India, nearly a quarter of a million statuettes were uncovered near a 3,000-year-old sarcophagus. Is this the tomb of a forgotten pharaoh? Well, apparently AI, or someone really dumb, wrote this article. It says it's by Nicholas. But is Nicholas even a person? Claims he's a journalist dedicated to science and technology. The reality is... Egyptologists found 225 exceptional figurines in this tomb. Not a quarter of a million. That number doesn't show up in any of the articles or the scientific literature anywhere. So you can see what's happening. Journalists are lying to be relevant and giving you false information. We're giving you the real deal. They did find 225 exceptional figurines in this tomb but not a quarter of a million. Let's talk about the sodium tail of Mercury, shall we? There it is. The biggest comet in the solar system is actually a planet. It's Mercury. 
On December 3rd, Steve Balavia photographed Mercury's magnificent tail from Surrey, Virginia. Are you picking up what we're putting down? Comets and asteroids are just pieces of terrestrial planets like Mercury, Venus, Mars, and Earth that were broken up in a catastrophe, retain their charge, and react to the current charge that they're moving through in the solar system. What we're looking at here is a 24 million kilometer plume of plasma. It's not being ejected from Mercury. It's being reacted from Mercury due to the electrical environment Mercury moves through in its orbit. First predicted in the 1980s, that's how long electric universe theory has been around, Mercury's tail was discovered in 2001. Its source is Mercury's super thin atmosphere. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. It's an electric discharge because Mercury is not shrinking in any way. Well, it is through, due to the plasma discharge, but not the way that they're talking about it. We need a complete rewrite of cosmology because it's everyone's baffled. No one knows how to explain this. And if this were a comet, they would say this is a cryovolcano. Yeah, that's how dumb they are. Speaking about dumb people, we're about to cover one right now. But before we do, do you know about Kevin Jameson's free book, The Great Crustal Shift Hoax, The Truth They Tried to Hide? This baby is just 64 pages long, is completely comprehensive, goes through Hapgood, uh, World in Peril by Maynard White. It goes through the Adam and Eve story. It covers Ben Davidson's The Next End of the World nonsense. And it explains it all, how to evaluate the theories, general criteria for crustal shift theories, and the fact that they violate known laws of physics. All of them. Newton's laws of motion. The law of conservation of angular momentum. Characteristics of the motive force. They ignore the gravitational force. They ignore the frictional force. They misunderstand the rotational axis in free space free space, and on and on. This book covers it all step by step for the layman. A lot of stuff you might not understand, but it's written for you to dive in to the great crustal shift hoax, which we've been trying to cover ad nauseum on our channel. And look, I just went through the whole book. It's that simple. And we're doing this tomorrow on our science show because of something that this lunatic put out today. I don't know what the hell this is, but do you understand what's happening when we get a story like the top story in the morning news today about them spotting the galactic magnetic reversal and it's local? <laughs> do you understand what it's like, what was that, like a week or two ago, geodesy breaking down? That so first of all, geodesy is not breaking down. Second of all, the galactic magnetic field has nothing to do with our solar system or planetary magnetic fields. I read the paper. This is the paper he is claiming shows that the galactic magnetic field is reversing locally. Well, yeah, it may very well be. But they also allude into the paper that it has nothing to do with planetary magnetic fields. It has to do with looking at our galaxy as a whole and the magnetism that it displays. Not only that, this paper is a model. It's a model, a three-dimensional model for the reversal in local, large-scale, interstellar magnetic fields. Not planetary. Local, large-scale, interstellar magnetic fields have nothing to do with planetary magnetic fields. But Ben Davidson is a lawyer and not a scientist, so he uses AI to find these papers he doesn't read them because he can't understand them because if he did, he would understand that this paper is a model. So they utilize the FD data from Dragon Survey in 2025 to test a model for the reversal of local large-scale magnetic fields. 
Not planetary scales. Galactic scales. But he doesn't explain this to anyone. In fact, he is so vague in this video that everyone calls him out. Wow, two minutes, 45 seconds, and nothing of any tangible value stated. Vagarities and nonspecifics. And in every one of these comments, he is such a disgusting human being. He calls people faggots. Are you new to my page? Sit down, boy. Adults are speaking. It, his entire Twitter feed is disgusting. And I'm actually glad I've been blocked for over three years because I wouldn't want to any, even interact, interact with a scumbag. Oh, you can't be bothered to click my name and see how famous and smart I am. It makes you lazy, fucking retard. He calls people's faggots and retards in just the first three comments. And it gets worse. I, I'll leave you a link below because you're not blocked. And the only reason we're looking at this feed is because I'm allowed to find his feed, just not comment on it. So if you're still following this charlatan and snake oil salesman, Join Leah and I tomorrow we'll, we, we, we will break down the paper, explain every point in which he's wrong, and the fact that nothing in his theory holds weight. Not a single thing. Ding, ding. And the way that he claims with such certainty that this paper, which is a model of large-scale interstellar magnetic fields, which have nothing to do with planetary fields, has something to do with the magnetic reversal on Earth, makes him look even more stupid, in my opinion. You know it's not stupid. Investing in precious metals. Fiat currency is dead. It will only be around for a few more years. And big things are happening. Today, silver hit another all-time high. 90, 59, 33, almost at 60 bucks. It's going hundreds of dollars per ounce, maybe in the next year. You could triple your money by hedging your bets. And one of the drivers here is India unleashes silver as banking collateral. There's over a billion people on that continent and they are gobbling up silver at record rates, creating scarcity. Not only that, we need silver in all of our modern batteries, all of our AI centers, and all of our computers. And the amount of AI data centers that are going up worldwide are literally going to strip the market of any purchasable silver. It will be so, so scarce and so expensive, your mind will be blown. A single silver quarter could be worth $100 in just one year. Hedge your bets and do what thousands have done with Gold Co., which is why we've partnered with them. Just go to diamondlovesgold.com or click the link below. The industry leader from precious metal IRAs to direct purchases of gold and silver, they've helped thousands diversify and protect their retirement savings every day. Request your free 2025 gold and silver kit. You get a printed guide, an audio guide, a video guide. There is no obligation and there's no penalty from switching from your standard 401k that you've got sitting around from an old job into precious metals. It's that simple. Just fill out and request your free gold and silver kit and you're on your way to protecting your retirement savings. Mark my words. And that's a boom to knowledge. Hit the thumbs up, share the video, subscribe to the channel, and join us tomorrow night on Rumble, 8 p.m. on Magnetic Reversal News for the expose of exposés on this fraud and the great crustal shift hoax. And that is a boom. <laughs>